day. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow. Tell somebody to grow. grow. Every tree that is planted in the sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Best, best. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of Eden. Verse, move, move, move down to, what, to, to verse 15. Let's go down to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to dress him and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou shalt be as if you Now, what do they not? When God commanded the earth to be formed, and God said it was so. He saw it in the spirit realm. It was not like that in the physical. Because in the physical, the Bible says, God put man to dress the garden and to plant the, the, the things. But in the spirit, he saw that God walks by faith that sees. It is impossible for you not to walk by faith that sees. Your faith must be able to see and access it. Are you getting me? So God said, it is so. What do you want from the Lord? What are the promises God has given to you? Are you seeing them in the spirit realm? Do you have access of them with your eyes of understanding? If you can't see it, you will learn. For 
fit to come to reality. I'm going to do a prayer tomorrow evening. And this is going to be my prayer. I want everybody, you write on a piece of paper what you see your life five years from now. Starting from now. What you see your life five years from now. Because the Lord says it is a time. So we need to do a prophetic bringing down of the future. Yeah. What do you see your life five years from now? Write it down. If you can't see it, I'm not talking about this. If you can't see it, come for prayer. Something is wrong. You might be lucky, but some people don't see anything. All they see is John or Mary or Mary as well. <laughs> and they're in trouble. If <laughs> that's what you see, you are in real trouble. All they see is, I need to get a job. I need to get a job. See, your life is bigger than that. Are you getting it? We're talking about destiny beauty. So you write your you five years plan for your life. What you want God to do for you. And when you write it, I want you to you, you come you can with it with a sacrificial seed to plant. Now you have to understand what the scripture said. We read it this morning. It said, For your giving produces fruits of righteousness. So that is, it is covenanted and guaranteed that this is what I am doing. This is where I am going. You can't live anyhow. Now the Bible says in the book of Genesis. That when God spoke to Abraham, that Abraham did not go to a land I am going to show you. Then Abraham left. Many of us told that story. He carried a lot a lot. I'm sure the pastor has preached many times. And they were going. And there was famine on the way. Abraham saw nothing. And God and he, he entered into, he went to Egypt. And when he arrived in Egypt, God used the king of Egypt to drive him out of Egypt. Some people don't want you beside them. It is a cross to your destiny. They are driving you away from to your destiny. Because if Pharaoh did not chase Abraham out of Egypt, Abraham would have set you there. If I have a friend who does not want me again, or begin to behave funny towards me, I know she is pushing me to my destiny. Yes. Are you understanding me? Yes, so they came out, Abraham came out. And when Abraham and the, the, the servant of Abraham and the servant of Lord, they had problems. And when they had problems, they separated Abraham, servant of Lord. And God appeared to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13. For verse 13. He said, Abraham, come. And the Bible says he took Abraham out of the dead. He said, Abraham, lift up your eyes. Not be sound. For the land you see, I will give unto you. It was impossible for Abraham to see the land with the physical eyes. He had to see it in the spirit. Because the way God functions, you can't function opposite to him and have God's result. You have to function like it. What is a vision for your life? Oh, somebody says, what is a vision for your life? I told you, Pastor, I can't have any vision because even if I have a vision, I don't know how to go out of here. Don't bother about the conditions. Bother about what you can see. Am I speaking to somebody here? I'm trying to preach and teach at the 
the same time because I don't have much time. Bother about what you can see. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw. And the Lord said, This land. Now, when you look at the geographical dimension of the land of Canaan, it is impossible practically to see it with the naked eyes. And the Bible says, God told Abraham, walk through the land. You are walking it in the spirit of your mind. Now, you have to understand that seeing with your spiritual eyes, it's a, it is an increase to a level of revelation. And it goes beyond love and just faith. Praise God. Now let me give you an example of the Bible. Let's read it. You understand what I'm saying? Follow me to the Philippians. Philippians. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Look at somebody. Say, what do you see? What do you see? Listen, if you forget everything we preach during this program for the inauguration, don't forget this one. What do you see? And I conceived my family and my life for five years. And I wrote it down. I wrote everything down. And I told my wife, this is my five-year vision for us. Has it come to pass or not? It has come to pass. Remember, I said what you see must be back with consideration. We want? No concentration. Consecration. It means it must be bad with a life of integrity and righteousness. It must be bad with a life of walking with God. Let's look at Philippians. I was about to show you something there. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Are we together? Yeah. There's somebody, Isaac is about to come out in your life. Say you will laugh and laugh and laugh. It doesn't matter if you don't believe. Your laughter. I 
and a spiritual understanding of his will, the eyes of your spirit being opened. Amen. Are you understanding me? But then somebody said, Revelation goes higher. Revelation goes higher. It takes revelation to be fruitful. Amen. And when we talk about seeing with the eyes of the spirit, we are talking about a revelation of your life according to the will of God. Someone understanding me? Yes. So he says, I know, brother, you will you, you, definitely have heard of your love. Your work is not enough. I know you do all the love actions. It's beautiful. But I start praying for you now. Because in spite of your love, your life is not being fruitful. In spite of your love, I don't see you beautiful in every good works. So I pray that the eyes of your spirit should be open. That you may have a revelation. If I will see it on one spot for seven hours, asking God for one revelation in my life, I will do it. It's so important for spiritual fruitfulness. Are you getting me? Let me show you another account in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's see Ephesians chapter 1. Is someone understand what we are teaching this evening? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. Are you there? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Look at somebody say from nothing to something. Lord, 
I know, I, I, I know Sister Jane is a very good sister. Now, you people understand why some sisters, they have faith of God to church. They are so good to everybody. But you, Pastor, you are doubting. God, why is our life no progress? Don't pray for our life to progress. Say, Lord, open the eyes of my understanding Amen. that she may have a vision for her life and a revelation of the hope of the calling of God in her. That is what settles your life. Revelation and a, a, a spiritual eyes is what guarantees fruitfulness. You can have faith, I know that. You can have love, God bless you for that. But if you are a blind believer, you don't see it. Your faith remains suspended. So you can pray. Now, he didn't say that I fast and pray to bind demons. We only bind by revelation. We bind by discernment. Demons are not everywhere. And not every stagnation is caused by demons. Fire of the Holy Ghost, fire, fire, consume, consume. The fire has consumed everything, but there's nothing to consume again. Then you must take the Holy Ghost, fire, man, go shaka, consume. No! Stop! Get in His presence. Let the eyes of my understanding go. I need a revelation. I need to see my life. Lord Jesus, I know that is a prophetic me. I want to see that prophetic me. Because if I'm able to see the prophetic me, it will merge into my real me and will become the divine me. Somebody understand what I'm preaching? He said, Let thy will be done on earth as it is written in heaven. Look at someone said there is something written about you in heaven. Are you understanding me? There is something written about your life in heaven. And my Bible says in heaven there is no pain, no sorrow, no weeping, no crying. So if something is written about you in heaven, it will be a life of no pain. Lord, I come to do that. 
changed the order. He would have told them, man, go your to your Lord Christ. He no. Another man came to Jesus and said, come to my house. But when Jesus was coming, the man said, you don't need to carry it. Say a word and my servant shall be The Jesus said, your servant is here. Is it not the same today? How do you want this? an object? Write what you want. Amen. Are you getting me? Amen. So if I would touch the hair of his garment, and I don't need you, Jesus, to lay hands on me. Because as I'm preaching like this, you can grab your miracles without me even praying for you. As long as your spirit is open, it can turn into your spirit. Because for the word of faith to manifest in your life, it must become a word in your spirit. Am I preaching to somebody here? I'm going to share you a testimony for you to understand that. When we were getting the hall for the church in Moria, now we were looking for it. We wanted a, a big meeting hall, a big hall and a big hall. And the price was terrible. And after doing every human analysis, I saw that this is too much for the church. I think I spoke with you that one I said it's too much for the church. And I told the brethren who said, search for another hall. Search for another hall. They went and searched, nothing. One day I sat out praying. And after praying for about one hour, something like lightning struck my spirit. The word of faith. It came into me. Bam! And an uncommon bonus came and I caught me. I said, go and book that hall. We are taking the hall. Yeah. Are you getting me? If it doesn't enter your spirit, you don't grab it. Do you want a miracle from God? Say, Lord, I need this thing to enter my spirit. Faith is not of a man. It is the word of God in the human spirit. When it enters your spirit, there are nobody can take it from you. If you men begin to say, Pastor, it is impossible, you don't see it because it's inside your spirit. Oh boy, somebody is getting the word of faith into your spirit tonight. Are you getting me? When are you believing God for it? It has to come into your spirit. It has to come into your spirit. It has to come into your spirit. It has to dawn deep inside your spirit. You determine it. Now I could have sat and said and remained an intellectual. I could have sat and remained an economist and begin to analyze the reality of it. The reality of it would have kept us down. So, because every time you analyze the reality of the situation, the spirit of faith takes off from your life. As are we going to be able? It is not about your ability. If God doesn't give you what is bigger than you, then that is not God. Hello. Am I preaching to somebody? If God will only give you a job here when you know you can get a job by your ability, then it's not God. He needs to position into your spirit something that will blow off your mind. So that it will not depend on your ability. Hello. May the Lord open your spirit. That the word of faith planted in this of When it comes into your spirit, there's a peace. Now the woman says, if I will touch the hem of his garment, now take notes. The man delayed his miracle. Because he wanted Jesus to come right to his house and the child died. So they ran to him and told him, Yo, don't go like this. The master again, the, the, the girl is dead. Hello. 
he had to level Jesus. Because instead of Jesus giving the miracle, Jesus had to first preach to him. <laughs> Hello? He said, Jesus told him, said, Be not afraid, only believe. <laughs> when you prolong it, you create circumstances, you create situation for the devil to plant seeds of doubt. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Do you know if this man told Jesus, just speak a word, Jesus would have spoken a word and all these things would have happened. What are the actions of the faith? You can't talk about faith and you are walking opposite to what you talk about. You walk in the direction of what you talk about. You behave what you talk about. It must have action. That's why I call it corresponding actions. So we went for the hole, we grab it. Oh, so we are taking it. And putting every expenditure together. We don't know where everything is going to come from. But we are going for it. Because the spirit of it came into my spirit. I tell God for my wife, she looked at me and she said, okay, anything God tells you, do it. <laughs> and then she reminded me, you know, you know our faith are not there, they say now. So just do it. <laughs> because I'm a risk taker. You, you can't manifest in faith if you are not a risk taker. When you are too cautious, you remember where you are. You are too cautious, you are calculating. I don't get, no, 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 no. We take risks, spiritual risks. We are going for it. We are going for it. It took spiritual risks to start this commission. He knows what I'm talking about. It took spiritual risks to live where I was, surrounded with every comfort and everything, and to carry my wife and my daughter. We had a daughter that was living with us. Three or four. Driving a car to a strange land where we knew nobody. Nothing. I only had the word of faith in my spirit. The Lord says, Go far away. You can't be in the comfort zone and expect faith to happen. Am yes. I preaching to somebody here? Yes. And we drove to a strange land. I have never slept in that place. I have only passed there to another place. I have never ever stayed there. I don't know anything about it. And the Lord says, go there. Mm. My wife, she's, my wife's not going to look at me. Is it what God has to ask me? It's okay. Anywhere you go, I will follow. That's what it takes for a godly wife. Mm -hmm. Not the one who will remove Jesus and put on the bed. Mm -hmm. I will tell you all kinds of carnal analysis. Mm -hmm. Why you shouldn't do it. That's why when God told Abraham to kill Isaac, he did not even tell Sarah. <laughs> And why I was there, 
I had one of my spiritual sons who was working in that city. He was one heavy me to locate it. Why I was in that city, the Lord, why I was in that area, the voice of God came to me, what are you doing here? I said, Lord, I'm searching for a hall. This is not where I want you to get a hall. Mm. And I then and told him that my son. His name is Bragiba. I said, Bragiba, I'm wasting my time here. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, I'm wasting my time here. He said, what do we do? I sent him her. That is somebody was directing me a place somewhere down the road. Now, I have been taking a place because it's very far from the town. And when it is night, the whole area is dark. How am I going to start a church there? I don't know anybody. <laughs> Who is going to come? So I told him, no, let us go and take that place as last resort. We left together. We went there. Listen. It was discouragement personified. You don't know what I'm saying. You know, sometimes you are going to a place. First of all, you don't even see taxis going there. You have to take a bike. And every place is dark. You are going there. Everybody is in the house. You don't see anybody on the street. And we got there. The place was dark. We knocked at the door. And the man that directed us to came up. He said, sit down. We sat down. Immediately I sat on the chair. The Lord said, this is the place. Amen. <laughs> That's how it works. And I told the brother, I said, this is the place. He looked at me and said, Pastor. I said, this is the place. And the man took us. I said, Pastor, they told us there's a hall here. He said, come on, let's show you. let me show you all. He opened it. He was looking to be old. The building was shattered. It was already broken like this. They are not using it for more than one year. And I looked around and I wanted to go and the Lord says, This is the place. So we are looking at 